Hello everyone and welcome to this UWS presentation on background to UWS and studying in Scotland. So I'm Adam Stockley and I'm Student Recruitment Coordinator at the University of the West of Scotland. So to give a bit of background to my role, I am usually in England and Northern Ireland primarily, going to many, many schools, speaking to a lot of students, giving advice all about university and UWS. Also, you'll see me at careers fairs, doing presentations much like this, and the big UCAS fairs that happen throughout the year and much more as well. So as I said, this presentation will be on the background to UWS and studying in Scotland. So this is what we're going to be covering throughout the presentation. A few facts about UWS, a look at the UWS campuses and courses, so seeing what is available at each campus. What can you do with an extra year at UWS? So I'll go into a bit more detail about what that means for you. Advanced entry onto UWS courses, student life and things to do in Scotland. So what can you get up to alongside your degree? So at a glance, UWS has five campuses, four based in the west of Scotland, which we'll be going to much more detail in a few minutes. So Paisley, Lanarkshire, Eyre and Dumfries, all near the big hub city of Glasgow. Also, we do have a campus based in London, although this is more for postgraduate degrees. So the degrees you do if you want to study a subject further. So do have a look and see if any takes your fancy and you can move to the UK's capital. At UWS, we have a lot of study abroad opportunities. We have over 140 partner universities just in Europe and more further afield. We have just under 20,000 students at all of our campuses. We have excellent travel links across the UK and further afield as well. We have 60 plus undergraduate courses, which covers a wide range of disciplines, which we'll be going into much more detail in professionally recognised programmes and practical experience options such as work placements and sandwich years as well. Also, UWS is top in the UK for overall student satisfaction in the current courses. Also, we are in the top 600 universities in the world in the Times Higher Education 2020 World University Rankings and in the same rankings, we top in, are in the top 150 universities under 15, 50 years of age, which is called the Young University Rankings. And UWS is the number one young university in Scotland. We are, we have an award, women, uh, award winning support team, also an award winning students association or students union as they are called as well. Our Lanarkshire campus won the Sustainable Buildings That Expire Award as the campus is 100% powered by renewable energy. Also, our teacher education course was ranked number one in the whole of the UK in the Guardian University Guide. So here are our four campuses. So I have mentioned them briefly, but here's a bit of a picture just to put um, a bit of a visual on where, what they all look like from the outside at least. So Paisley, Lanarkshire, Eyre and Dumfries. So I'll be going through some facts, a bit about the accommodation and also what you can study at each of these campuses because they're all very, very different. So our Paisley campus is our biggest campus based in the heart of Paisley, which is one of Scotland's largest towns. So around 10,000 students are at this campus. It's only 10 minutes away from Glasgow city centre via train. So you're very, very close to Scotland's largest city. So lots of events and socials will be happening in Glasgow as well as Paisley as well. All UWS students have free access to the gym at Paisley. And also this applies to all of our Scottish campuses. We have modern facilities for engineering, computing and physical science courses. So accommodation, it starts from around £93 to 157 a week, depending on what room you would like. So single rooms are shared facilities. So you have to share a bathroom and also a kitchen with other people. And obviously you'll get your own room with your bed and that. And en suite means you'll still have to share a kitchen, you share the facilities like that, but you'll have the bathroom in your room uh, already. 
Each residence has a social space for students, so you can hang out, get to know the people who you're living with. And the rent includes all bills and internet, and it's a majority of first year accommodation. You'll have all your bills and internet included, so you don't need to think about any other additional things on top of the initial rent, which you'll be paying. So what can I, can I study at Paisley? So you'll see a few courses which overlap, which are available at all campuses. So some business courses, the nursing courses especially, but the ones where which you primarily study at Paisley is the technology and computing. So things like computer animation, computer science, web and mobile development, physical and chemical sciences, so chemistry, forensic science, etc. Your business courses have a majority of business courses at Paisley, such as accounting, events management, social sciences, such as criminal justice, criminal justice with policing, psychology, engineering. So you've got your four engineering disciplines there and then you've got your nursing and one life science available at Paisley. So. You can see why in the previous slide that this has modern facilities which are based around engineering, computing and physical and chemical sciences because they are the majority of the courses and Paisley has fantastic computer labs for your business courses and obviously for your research and all that and library etc etc. So the Lanarkshire campus is our brand spanking new campus which only opened just over two years ago. It's a £110 million pound campus and it's powered by 100% renewable energy by the local wind farms which I mentioned uh, just before. So the facilities here focus on sport, nursing and science facilities so I will obviously go what you can study at Lanarkshire and also if you're thinking of taking your car you have there is a hundred sorry a thousand secure car park car parking spaces available which are free to use for students accommodation so there's no university owned accommodation at the Lanarkshire campus at the moment we are hoping to create some new ones because the old ones are just getting a bit too old uh, for use but there are privately owned halls uh, nearby the campus so you have en suite which we mentioned already, and also you have studio rooms. So studio room is where it'll have everything you need in one room, such as your bedroom, your kitchen, your bathroom will all be in the one room. 24 seven security around the residence, and this is the same in all residents, uh, university or non-university owned. So 38 week contract. So this is the usual contract you'll get for your accommodation. Some of them do vary depending on where you go. So that's usually the length of an academic year but if you do want to stay over summer there are longer terms available and you can get discounts on top of that so there's a gym and social area included and that's just in the accommodation you also have the fantastic uws lanarkshire gym as well which again is completely free for students so what can i study at lanarkshire so the difference you can see is much more life sciences sports and nursing as well. So your life sciences, you've got biomedical science, you've got bioscience with zoology, environmental health, sports, you've got your three sports disciplines there, coaching, development and exercise science. Then nursing alongside the, the, the typical ones that we have at UWS, the adult and the mental health nursing. We've got midwifery, which is a very popular course, and paramedic science, which only was introduced this year. Technology and computing, you've got cybersecurity and computer science, you've got your business and then your social sciences. So you can see there's a lot less in the technology, computing, business, social sciences because they're done more at Paisley, but the option is there if you do want to do that. Uh, but the ones which Lanark should focus on is the life sciences. You can see around the pictures, you can see there's lots of it, lots of facilities, high quality facilities available for a nursing, life sciences and sport. So you can see in the bottom left hand corner someone there doing a sports experiment with a with a weight and then also you got next to that on the right you got the the students using the domu room which essentially one student has goggles and like a brace on their arm and this emulates someone who has bad eyesight or cannot move as well as they used to and the person the nursing student is there looking after them so it gives you a real life uh, or emulates a real life nursing experience so the air campus 
is our 81 million pound campus based by the River Air, and it's near the beautiful town centre of Air and the beautiful Air Beach as well. And the facilities here cover different disciplines such as performance, film, media, music, broadcasting, education, and also healthcare as well. So accommodation, this is university owned accommodation, starting from £111 to £157 per week. Ensuite rooms and studio flats are available. And luckily the accommodation is right next to the main building. So you can get up, have a have a nice lie in and obviously get, get to your lectures on time, but you don't have far to go to get to your lectures and seminars. Resident assistants organise social events throughout the year. So these are available at university owned accommodations as well. So essentially they're there to organise social events or get you mixing with people who you're living with, the people who are in the same building as well. So it's a really good way to get to know new people when, when you move. So what can you study at AIR? So this focuses on, as I've mentioned, creative industries such as television and, and media, journalism, filmmaking, screenwriting and performance. You can see around there's lots of uh, students doing those disciplines. You've got loads of fantastic facilities for film and television and radio. And you've got one sport discipline, which is different from the ones from the Lanarkshire ones. So you've got sports coaching and development, which is only uh, which is only available at the Air Campus. Also, our education, which are highly regarded. So you've got your education, childhood studies, then also you've got a mix of both. So you might have seen it on the Paisley course list that some of the courses are both taught both at Paisley and Air. So the chemistry, physics and maths are taught at the Paisley campus and then the education side is taught at the Air campus. So air is about an hour away, uh, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what train you get, away from Glasgow. Paisley's actually a bit nearer, so it'll probably take about 35 minutes to get on the train um, to between Paisley and Lanarkshire. And also Lanarkshire is only around 35 minutes on the train, I just forgot to mention in the last slide. And also, as again, you can see that it does have adult nursing and mental health nursing as they are very popular courses at UWS. Lastly, we've got the Dumfries campus and this is a much smaller campus based on an 85 acre estate and it's shared with other universities as well. It's around 30 minute walk to Dumfries town centre and it's situated in rural Scotland so if you do want a more rural experience of Scotland, Dumfries might be the place for you. Modern Nursing Skills Lab uh, are available and as you can see there's not much you can study very very based on thing, social work and one business management course so it is as you can see a lot smaller campus so at Scottish universities in general and at UWS of course you can actually do four or three years and you get you can really decide on what you want to do so a typical UWS course is four years. Some of them are three years, but majority of them are four. This is because the Scottish education system is different. And this means that students can join university when they're 17, if they so wish. So this means they have an extra year to really gain the foundations of the course. And UWS offers advanced entry onto 90% of courses. So I will be going to more in depth about advanced entry, but it means that you can jump into year two, uh, year, year one, year two or year three of a UWS course, depending on what your qualifications are. Your tuition fee low is capped at three years. So meaning if you do do a four year degree, your tuition fees will only be applicable for three of them years. So student finance will only pay for three of them years. Entry requirements are lower for first year entry. So this means that if you don't get the grades which you're expecting, or if you want to do something completely different from what you're studying at, uh, at sixth form or college at the moment, you have the opportunity to get onto a first year of a four year course, and that will give you the foundations of that. So if you do really want to get onto the course, but maybe you don't have the entry requirements to get into second year, for example, you can go into first year and having that extra year will help you gain the 
qual- uh, gain the foundations and the knowledge before continuing the degree. So student finance will cover your living costs for four years. So this means that even if you are uh, your tuition fees are capped at three years, it means that your living cost will be for four years because obviously you're there for four years at university. So if there's student finance, England, Wales or Northern Ireland, that is applicable for all of them. So with that in mind, the question comes up, what can you do with an extra year at UWS? So you've got that this extra year. So what can you do with it to make sure you're well prepared for when you graduate? So I'm going to give you three things you could get up to. So an internship or work placement. So UWS degrees encourage you to undergo a work placement. So this can be up to a year. And essentially you work in a, in a, a company in your field and you gain first hand experience. So you can see some example companies there, such as Channel 4, BBC, the National Australian Bank, um, Balfour Beatty, lots of other ones available as well. And the careers team, which I'll be going over in a bit more detail a couple of slides later, can help you find these placements. And most play placements are fully paid because you are doing the work, just maybe in a less uh, intense capacity. And it means you could get a job at the end of it. So my brother actually studied economics and finance. He did a year working in a insurance firm. And after that, he got the job at the end of his year placement. And then after he graduated, he resumed working there and he still works for that company today. But the main thing is to stand out from other graduates in your field. So if you have someone who's just done a degree and hasn't done anything else, and then you've got a candidate who has done a fantastic degree and also has done a work experience. It means you've got ammo to use for your interview. You've got lots to write about on your application form or your CV as well with your work experiences. So it makes you stand out from other graduates in your field. And that's the main thing that you really need to do because a lot of students are getting it's around 80% of students get a 2-1 or a 1st, which are very, very good degrees, but you need something extra alongside that. Also, internships are usually unpaid, but usually get your travel paid if you need to go further afield. But any experience, paid or unpaid, is really, really beneficial. Also, the work placements as well, they don't have to be a full year. You could do what I did. I did three individual marketing placements, which are around one or two months each. I did this in summer, in Easter, alongside my degree. So I didn't have to do an extra year, but I still got that work experience. And as I've mentioned a bit in the introduction about studying abroad, so 140 partner universities in just in Europe available at UWS, but you can go all over the world, North America, Asia, Oceania, it depends on where the university has a partner university. So you can learn a language alongside a UWS degree. So UWS doesn't have traditional language courses, but you can learn a language alongside your degree, depending on what your timetable looks like. So you'll experience a different culture, a different way of teaching, and you can work on your language skills. If the country you go to, English isn't the, the first language. So studies show that graduates who um, study abroad are more employable. And this is because you've got the confidence of going into a completely different country, living there, adapting to the culture and the language, uh, potentially the language as well. Also, a lot of companies are more internationally focused. You may need to move abroad for your job. So having the experience of already going abroad studying there as well, but also gain, maybe gaining language skills and also the cultural skills as well. You have a fantastic, th fantastic things to talk about when you are, when you have graduated. And also it's just a really, really fun time. You can escape the wet and rainy weather of uh, the UK, if you so wish, and go to somewhere completely different and you'll meet loads of new friends you'll have a fantastic time. So I, I would highly recommend it. Also, you can enhance your skills. You can develop more knowledge of your subject, maybe specialise in a specific area. So you can do what a, you can do something called tailoring your degree. So if there's 
a job or an area which you want to go into, you can specify your, um, you can tailor, sorry, your degree around that job. So for example, I really wanted to do digital marketing when I graduated. So I chose the modules which were so which were around digital online marketing, all that good stuff. And then after that, for my research project or dissertation, which I'm sure you'll be hearing uh, when you are at university, definitely. So essentially, it's a big research project where you do all your own research and reading around it. So I chose a topic which was based around digital marketing and then when i went for my first job which was in social media web marketing digital marketing i had that to talk about and it um, it helped me a lot in the interview and the application process so you can utilize uws's award-winning student support services to enhance your employability and also your study skills so alongside the careers team which help you find work placements and internships. You also help to enhance your ability. So what I mean by that is that if you need your CV looking at to make it spruce it up, make it make sure it makes all the sense, it has all the right information in, they're available there for you. Mock interviews. So if you're not confident in your interview skills and to start off with, no one ever is until you've done a few. So having that mock interview can make you more confident, even if you're just going for a part time job work placement or that graduate job that you have your eye on. Study skills as well. So time management skills, looking at uh, referencing for your assignments. Writing skills There's so much you can do to in increase your study skills whilst you're at university, which will really help obviously get the best grade that you can get. And then there's another year to get involved in student activities, which can help enhance your CV. So things such as joining a sports or society. So I joined the volleyball team and also the drama society. And I was a committee member there. So I was chairman of the volleyball team. Also, I was treasurer and social media throughout the years that I was playing uh, in the volleyball club. So I had roles of responsibilities. And again, that can just add onto your CV. And also you can volunteer for your students union, giving back to the community. And again, you learn a lot of different skills along the way. And maybe you could do all three. Having that extra year gives you the opportunity to really try out the three major things which I think would help you be really, really prepared for when you graduate and you have the confidence, you'll have the experience to go for that job after you graduate. So now I'm going to talk about advanced entries. I've mentioned this a couple of times already, so I'm just going to explain it a bit further and see what it can do for you. So if you look at a typical UWS course structure, it's four years. Some of them are three, of course. Um, so if you look at the A-level entry, obviously BTECs are accepted as well. So, excuse me, if for year one, this is for our accounting course. If your A-levels are free Cs, you are eligible to get onto the first year of the course. Though if it's free Bs, for example, you do have the opportunity to go into year two of the course. So it, it, again, it depends on what your grades are. And if you want to just do three years at university, that's completely up to you. Also, you can do a higher national certificate or a HNC, which is an extra year at college or a higher national diploma, which is an extra two years at college, or, um, or as it's called a HND. So this can get you onto year two or year three, respectively, of a UWS course. So if you're not ready for the university life straight away, that's absolutely fine. You can continue at college and then top up your degree, uh, sorry, top up um, at UWS or another university and get that honours degree at the end of it. So it's given you flexibility, it's given you choice about what you want to do after sixth form on college. If you're not ready to go to university straight away, you can continue at college and then go into year two or three of a UWS course. If you're wanting to do four years, you can go into year one of a course, or if you're feeling more confident, you can go into year two as well. But there's no disadvantage doing four years.
So now we've gone through all the academic stuff. So now I'm going to show you the fun stuff that you can get up to whilst you're studying in Scotland. So here's some of the things of the student life you may experience. So Freshers Week is loads of social events to ease you into university life, usually put on by the Students' Union. And then the Students' Union is run by students for students. So they make sure you're having a really good time, making sure that you're not stressed and they have support systems in place or if you are and they organize a lot of social events student support so as i mentioned the su have support service available but then you've got the wider student support services available at uws so if you've got any queries you've got any anything at all that you need to talk about or anything to do with finance anything at all were there to support you. Sports clubs and societies, which I've mentioned briefly, but they're really fantastic to get involved in. If there's a sport you're doing right now and you want to continue it, or you a new sport that you want to try out, it's really, really fantastic to experience. And also loads of different societies, as I mentioned, like drama society, you got cheerleading and things like that. So there's over 60 sports clubs and societies at UWS. Here are some of the different cities you can explore, which are all connected by a fantastic public transport system. So you can easily get to these places all by a train. So first is Glasgow, and this is where I'm living at the moment. So figure that go first. So Glasgow is Scotland's biggest city, and because it is its biggest city, it has a lot going on in terms of what you can do socially. So there's theatre performances, there's restaurants, there's music which happens all over the city and there's loads of different events museums all across the city next you've got edinburgh which is scotland's capital so edinburgh is a lovely mix of the old and new so it has the edinburgh old town it has edinburgh castle uh, the picture there is colton hill which is a fantastic place to get those lovely instagram worthy views and much like Glasgow, it has a lot going on throughout the year for socials. Next is Dundee, which is a bit further north of Edinburgh. So Dundee, fun fact, is the creation of the Be Known the Dandy comics, which is which I used to read religiously back in the day. And also it is the birthplace of um, Rockstar Games, who made the Grand Theft Auto series. So that's another fun fact for you there. So it's a very well-known place for computer game development. Dundee's very near the, near the coast. And also it's a lovely entrance to the Scottish Highlands where you can get up to a lot of adventurous things. Next is Stirling, which is around an hour away from both Glasgow and Edinburgh. So this has been called the ancient capital of Scotland because it has Stirling Castle but also the William Wallace Memorial so if you heard of William Wallace if you ever watched Braveheart or might have heard through a history class that uh, there's a monument dedicated to the 13th century hero William Wallace so Stirling is a much smaller city with around 90,000 people but around 20% of that population is students so it's a very student focused city Inverness is based all the way up in the Highlands. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of adventurous things you can get up to. Hiking, mountain biking, kayaking, wakeboarding, everything you can imagine for outdoor activities. You can see there that the person in the picture is already doing a bit of fly fishing uh, near the city. So there's lots of things you can get up to. So you've got all the locks nearby, you've got camping opportunities, hiking opportunities, lots of Munros, which which we'll be going over in a couple of slides. Last but not least is Aberdeen. So Aberdeen is a bit further north in the northeast of Scotland, very near the coast as well. And it has places like the Aberdeen Market. It's also got a lot of museums and culture available as well. And also it is very near to the beautiful Highlands, similar to the other places. So these are just six cities, the major cities, I would say, which you can go to. But there's lots of different unique towns which you can go to as well, which 
such as Falkirk, which is very near Edinburgh and Glasgow, which has the Kelpies. Uh, give them a Google. They are very, very impressive. So there's lots of other things and other places you can get up to. So much to do in Scotland. So I'm going to give you five things which you could get up to, but there's a lot, lot more. So I mentioned um, there's a lot of events which happen every year in Edinburgh. So one is the Edinburgh Fringe, which you might have heard of already. So it's a big event over a few days, which covers theatrical performances, comedic performances, street performances, as in the picture there. It's a fantastic day if you get to go to it. And I managed to go to it in uh, 2019 and it was fantastic. Underneath is the Glasgow Mural Trail. So in all of the Scottish cities, there are a lot of murals. So these beautiful paintings on the side of buildings, there's loads of them around Glasgow. And the Mural Trail is around 15 of these murals. And you can just go and, you know, take a look at them, take a pictures. I've actually did this very recently whilst I was doing a bit of shopping around Glasgow. And you've got many unique things in all the cities, much like the Mural Trail. Concerts such as Transmit, which is in the picture. So Transmit used to be called Tea in the Park. So this is held in Glasgow Green, which is the huge park, uh, which is nearby the Glasgow city centre. So you can actually look at the Transmit 2021 um, lineup. It has a lot of well-known artists available. And alongside the big ones such as Transmit, there's lots of smaller venues you can go to and lots of little indie pubs where they'll have live music as well. Performances. So hopefully when uh, everything gets back to some sort of normality, we can go back to the fantastic performances which are available. The Royal Theatre, the Royal Opera is available as well. There's so much to see in terms of performances. And lastly, if you want to be a bit more cultural, you can go to the many museums which are available, the many castles and places you can go to. So the one in the picture is the v &A Museum in Dundee, which is actually the sister museum of the v &A in London. But also you've got the Kelvin Grove Art, Art Gallery, uh, an Art and Ga Art Gallery and Museum, sorry, which is in Glasgow and also the Museum of Scotland Edinburgh alongside countless others. So these are just five things you could get up to on a weekend, on your day off, but there's so, so, so much more you can get up to. So if you're feeling a bit more adventurous, you want to get out of the city, there's so much to do as well. And what is really good about Scotland is that even the major cities such as Glasgow and Edinburgh, very nearby is going out into the countryside. And if you go further away, you can get into the beautiful highlands as well. So Loch Lomond, for example, is only half an hour away from Glasgow. It's a lovely way just to clear your head, look at the fantastic landscapes which are nearby. Underneath is the Isle of Skye. So this is a bit further afield. So you may have to either rent a car or if you bring a car along or there are trips which are organised to visit the Isle of Skye. It's one of the most picturesque places in the UK to visit. Next is Munro Baggins. So I did mention a Munro in when I was talking about the different cities of Scotland. So fun fact about or a bit of history about Munro Baggin. In 1892, Hugh Munro essentially listed all peaks over 3,000 feet in height. And when you bag a Munro, you cross that off the list. So I've done five so far. So we've only got about 270 to go, so not too many. Um, so these are fantastic just to experience something completely different. You get views such as the one there. So that's me at a Munro called Shahalian. And it's just a fantastic views from up there, especially when the, the weather is nice. So, um, so a lot of people kind of use Munro as like a bit of a competition, see how many you can do. You can do, you know, between one or one or seven in a day if you've got a lot of time. You can do a bit of camping along the way. So there's a lot to do. And if you go back to the Scottish map there, you can see right in the top right hand corner is the Orkney and Shetland Islands. So if you want something a bit out of the way, a bit more rural, um, you can go to the Shetland and Orkney Islands because they're very, very, very picturesque as well. If you want something a bit nearer, but still very, very cool, the Isle of Arran, which is um, around an hour, an hour and a half away from Glasgow on the west coast. You can actually book your train ticket from Glasgow 
and also book your ferry ticket as well, all in the same transaction. And the Isle of Arran is seen as a miniature Scotland just on the one island with a really beautiful town and lovely beaches as well. So you may not be feeling adventurous. I certainly wasn't when I first came up to Scotland. But after, after, after trying all of these activities, going to these beautiful places, it's a fantastic way just to relieve stress as university can be stressful time, especially with your assignments and your deadlines. So you need to make sure that you have time for yourself, going out with your mates, doing a bit of hiking, doing a bit of camping. And this is coming from someone who's very, was not adventurous at all, but now I have got have, uh, have the hiking bug and I try to go every week to a different Munro or a different place to hike. So if there's something that you want to do, which is outside the city, there's lots and lots available. So to finish off the presentation, I'm going to show you a few things that is unique to Scotland. So things you can only find if you come and live and study here. So first is a Cayley, which is a traditional Gaelic dance. So this is usually done at celebrations such as weddings and birthdays. So I actually did one back all, all the way back in 2014 and I was terrible, but it was a lot of fun and I got a lot of help from uh, the people who were there. And it's just a fantastic time. There's a lot, just so much uh, enjoyment you get out of it. And hopefully you may be able to wear a kilt if you're feeling fancy as well. Next is the Highland Games. So this is in Dunoon, uh, in the Highlands, as you can imagine by the name. So the person there has a huge caber, which is a huge log, and he has to throw it and see how far that caber will go. Also, there's different events such as a sheaf toss, which is the big bales of hay, uh, the Scottish hammer throw and much more as well. So you want something a bit different, a bit out there. Highland Games is a fantastic opportunity. Next is the Scottish food. and I'm sure you've heard the Scots love for deep fried food. So alongside the deep fried Mars bars, you can see a nice little close up there. Hopefully it's not making you too hungry. You can even get deep fried sausages, deep fried fish, um, obviously, and uh, even deep pizzas. Uh, but if that's not more, uh, not your style, you can go for the fantastic fish which is available as in and out Scotland, there's all the fisheries are available. So you'll have some of the best fish you've ever, ta uh, ever tasted. And then also you've got things like square sausages, you've got the Scottish breakfast, oat cakes, empire biscuits. These are all foods you can only really find in Scotland. And there's so many choices for food, independent restaurants, and obviously the big chains as well. Lastly is Hogmanay, or Hogmanay. I can never pronounce that correctly the first time. So this translates to the last day of the year. So this is essentially New Year's Eve and alongside the big celebrations, fireworks, you know, Happy New Year and all that. There's also quite a lot of different traditions which happen in each of the cities and towns wherever you're living in Scotland. So one is called First Footing, where the first person to go into your flat or your house. Gives you good luck for the year. And then also there's gift giving among friends and family. And it's just really lovely. And you get a different taste of uh, Hogmanay wherever you are in Scotland. So these are a few things that are very unique to Scotland, but there's so much more as well. So definitely have a look to see what is available when you move up. So thank you very much for listening. I'm just going to plug the open day for UWS at the end. So it's obviously very important you attend an open day, especially if it's further away from home and you're coming up north of the border. You want to make sure you know what's available, what's in the surrounding areas. So we have a UWS online open day and all the open days because of the current situation, of course, will be online. So ours is on the 31st of October, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We have a lovely little QR code in the corner there. So your QR code reader is usually installed in your phone already. If not, you can download hundreds from the app store. So it just gives you the link for the registration page. So we have live talks, 
interviews and presentations, insight into the programmes that you're interested in, Q&A uh, sessions, advice on funding, accommodation, etc. virtual tours, uh, guiding around each of the campuses a bit more and much more as well. So if you are interested, please do come along because we'd love to see you there. And thank you again for listening. My email is there on the screen, adam.stockley at uws.ac.uk. And also we do have another QR code, or you can find both of these on the website, the Open Day and the Personalised Digital Prospectus. So the Digital Prospectus, you can personalise it for subject areas that you're interested in. So instead of having one full prospectus with all the courses, majority of them which you won't be interested in, this one creates one personalised for you. So if you want to scan that QR code or find it on the website, do have a look and see what courses are available at the University of the West of Scotland. So final time, thank you for listening and have a fantastic day.